guess what, Council of Comics? We made it to 500 subscribers. And we're here at the Albany Comic Con. All right, let's go. That's the brightest day. Where are the heroes? In the beginning, the life of the universe created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and without form. And the spirit hovered over the waters, melting the ice. And a voice from beyond said, let there be light. Phenomenal storyteller and someone who I truly admire. Great guy. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, we've got Optimus. Yep. Scarlet. We've Scarlet. got Scarlet. Yep. Let's. I and I happen to really have enjoyed the Hasbro first strike. Yep. Um, so, what was that? What? How did that come about? So the reason um, I started working on Hasbro First Strike was, first I was doing the Skylander comics with IDW. Mm -hmm. So Ron Mars and I worked on Skylanders. You can hold it. You can shoot. Um, so I did like, I was working on that and then I was, um, the editor on that was David Hedgecock and I guess he was also working on some of the Hasbro stuff and he offered me a chance to write the mask annual. Nice. Uh, which is over there too. So I wrote the mask annual which um, involved some of the Transformer characters and some of the G.I. Joe characters because it was like a recreation of the very first episode of Mask which if anyone remembers, asteroid comes out of the sky and it's like full of like this weird space toxin that they have to figure out. So it was sort of a retelling of that, except instead of an asteroid, there was Astro Train's head. Ooh. Landed. And he had like some cybernetic virus on him. And they were racing to these other locations to find the other piece of Astro Train about who would control this virus. So I did that. And then that led to working on Hasbro First Strike with Margaret Scott, which was an awesome experience. And Max Dunbar did the art. I have one of the pages in my office. It's so good. I do remember this crossover it was super amazing. Thank you. Because like I was like I was having a good time, and uh, and of course you know Anthony was like, did you see this yet? Did you see this yet? Did you see this yet? Yeah, it was great just to be able to work on play with all the toys that you grew up with. You know, always. And speaking of playing with awesome toys, uh, you wrote this fine piece, Finding Gossamer. I did. Which is about you know a young man who discovers magic through mathematics. That is correct. That's, and, uh, a, that's a pretty good pitch. Doesn't make it sound like homework at all. It no, kind of, it just, but no, it's just really so great. And then just, you know, how everything unfolds. And, and then the usual, like, he's the chosen one. Like, all of that, you know, that comes about. And, like, it's just such a fun story. Thank you. Um, so I would be remiss without bringing that up. Thank Are there you. any other projects that you would like to talk about? So I do have a new book that I'm working on. I don't have anything to show you at the moment. But it is a new comic um, that will be coming out later this year. And it is called Battle Mex. Ooh. M-E-X. Ooh. Right. So it is like a 
Aztec Super Sentai team set in a world where Mexico was never conquered. So like, Cortez shows up in the 1500s, but then like, you know, technology evolves organically from that society. Well, it's more like instead of them losing the fight, you had um, people with abilities show up and like the giants, and that were kind of like mechanized giants that show up and like that triggers a different timeline to start. And so in the present, um, El Cuco, and if you know, if you were raised like I do, you know you're afraid of the Cuckoo Man, yes. the Boogeyman, um, comes back and was like an agent of. Europe, working with Spain in order to like try to conquer Mexico at the time, um, is free from his prison, and now a new uh, age of battle mechs heroes need to rise up and fight him. So that's the comic I'm working on next. I love it. Thank and you. we can look forward to that one again? Uh, hopefully this summer, and it'll be available in English and in Spanish. Oh, I love it. And also, wait, I just want to mention Mask really quick. The Mask Annual. If anyone wants to pick it up. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's always I really a pleasure. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Thanks for the time. And Albany Comic Con. Where else, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Oh, we're at Albany Comic Con. So, yeah, buying comics, looking at the bins, all that stuff. Won't you come calculate my way? Hey Council, we're here with Brett from Fantasy Unlimited Comics in Putnam. Putnam? Putnam. All no, right. no, Putnam's my last name. Oh, Putnam's your last name. Oh, man. No, so wait, where's your shop? I don't have a shop. I've been doing this for 50 years without a shop. Oh, you're I do conventions, mail order, and I have people come over to my house. Okay, how can they find you online? Uh, well, the best thing to do is give me a text or a call. Uh, Fan of comics at earthlink.net is the way to reach me. At earthlink.net. Yeah. In the 21st century. And believe it or not, you are, I still I am, <laughs> You blow me away, man. It you still blow works. me away. No, I'm sure it works. I'm sure it works. I'm like, maybe I should dig up my old Earthlink account. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so, like, what got you into comics? Uh, I got into comics at nine years old. My older brother's best friend was 15 at the time. I was nine. And he decided he was too old to read these comics. So we offered them to my brother. My brother said, no thanks, he was too old too. But he said, you know, my kid brother loves to read. And so one thing led to another, he wound up giving me his comic collection and that got me started. And you're like, and that was mine. Yeah, that was back in 1970. So wow. my first show as a dealer was in 1976. Wow. In Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford. And I've probably there, done almost an a hour and away shows. from us. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I've done a thousand shows since then and I'm still going strong. That's it? I wanted to ask him how old he was when he started. All right, so how old were you when you did your first show? I was 13 years old. Holy cow, 13! My, <laughs> my mom drove me, she was skeptical. I how much did you pay together? for the table? $30. That's big money back then! <laughs> it was. And I, you know, I got all my comics graded and priced, and I did a lot of work, got them all ready. And then we did the show, and did a bunch of business, but my mom wasn't really clued in on what was happening. So we packed up the car after the show, and on the drive home, she said, so Brett, how much did you do? Did you do okay? And I counted it up in the car, and I said, I made $400. And wow. she's like, wow, that's fantastic. And so one thing led to another, and my comics wound up paying for my college expenses. That, that was my fantastic. goal. I See never, what the 70s were like, everybody? Yeah, I never had to take Things out a loan. Things have changed. Amazing. I have paid oh, Brett. for all seven years for undergraduate. I changed majors three times. He changed uh, majors three <laughs> times. That's the headline here, people. Forget about comics. The man was able to pay for his college education, and he's Switch majors like seven times. Oh my God! I need that a drink. That was pretty great. That <laughs> was pretty great. I know it was really great getting out of school without any debt. Amazing. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank you, you for joining us today. It's been a great pleasure. It is. I wish Thanks you all so the best. Yeah. Same here. Thank you.
Hey, Council of Comics. I'm here with Ken from... Oh yeah, we're here, uh, CNY uh, Comic Archive. We're out of Washington Mills, and if you don't know what that is, that is that's uh, where you go after you leave Utica, going west. Holy and, cow! Yeah, so we came, we, we came out, uh, we came out specifically for the con today. We, we bought some comics, we sold some comics, we talked to some artists, checked out some toys. It was awesome. Uh, you know, there was there's uh, like five of us here. Um, two of us at any time were out hunting for stuff. I love great. it. Yeah, I love it. So, Ken, how old were you when you just got into comics? I first remember my first comics that I really loved, right? I was at the barber shop, Ooh. and my uh, the barber had a, a sack of old comics, and my first one that I grabbed was uh, the Teen Titans, right? The, not the new Teen Titans, because I was like six or seven. The and, older Teen Titans. Yeah, the older ones, right? Um, Robin, and, Speedy, Kid Flash. Yeah, Robin, Speedy, Kid Flash. I think the Joker's daughter was in there somewhere. All right, so yeah. like so Wonder, was Wonder Girl old. was there too. All Wonder right. Girl was and there, maybe, and maybe Golden Eagle. Exactly, right? So I, I, I love that comic. And there was another, and I can't remember what it was. A lot of Flash, a lot of Green, uh, Green Lantern, uh, a lot of Brave and Bold. Um, I seem to remember the Mirror Master, the greatest Flash villain ever. Well, I mean, One except for uh, what is his name? Reverse Flash. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking earlier if we, we were talking like um, the top Captain was bad. Captain Boomerang. Oh, Captain Boomerang, and, yeah. And uh, who was that guy? Um, uh, Blizzard? No. High school? No, Captain Cold. Captain Cold. Captain Cold. Yeah, Captain Cold. He was great. Yeah. He was great. He had the greatest sunglasses. I love The rogues are wonderful. Really. Yeah, the and rogues gallery I mean, for the Flash. For me, has been like amazing. my primo is Weathermaster or Weather Wizard. Like, Weather Wizard. Was you know, it's just like yep. nope, yep. lightning, thunder, hail. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Arcade. 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 Oh, that's an X Men building. Oh no, not Arcade. What was his name? Uh, Trickster. Trickster. Yes. Trickster. Which played. Mark Hamill played repeatedly, um, marvelously. Amazingly. We could go all over the place with this. We could. Yeah, what's the next question? So how old were you when you did your first show? Ah, uh, well, I worked I, I worked in a comic shop uh, in the mall in Utica when I was going to college. Um, and uh, that was round about the time that two things happened. One, um, the first one was really important. Uh, that was uh, McFarlane's Spider-Man came out mm -hmm. on the foil covers. I was there when they came into the shop from Diamond, and I, I don't have them now. But I'm, you were surrounded by them I'm, then. I'm not bitter. I'm yeah. not bitter at all. Anyway, so uh, there was that, and the other thing was I got a girlfriend. So you know, so so that's that, that's how it works, right? You get a girlfriend, you kind of age out of comics and whatever. I never really, really aged out, but I didn't collect as heavy. Don't tell anybody, right? Listen. Get you a girl who loves comics. Get you a girl who loves comics. Because honestly, honestly, there's so many of out, out there. I've got the I've got this friend. She is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And she knows comics even better than me. Right? So I mean it's like it's it's like, you know, you don't have to hide your nerdness anymore. They're probably flying the nerd flag. So it's all good. Alright. My so, my exes fly many flags. Um, nice! But anyhow. The good ones. The Jolly Roger? Oh, there's something jolly about it. Oh! Um, I miss you, Mateo. So, like, uh -huh. um, so anyhow, did you enjoy the show? Oh, I did have a good time. Okay, I'll tell you a real quick story that happened to me, right? All right. So, I took a break from the booth and went over to Artist Alley and was checking out what everybody had, right? You know, and, you know, John Hebert's over there and, uh, you know, the Senate family and Ron Mars and everybody. I, I, I know I know those guys. I've, I've seen them around. I've talked to them. And I walk over and I see Bart Sears over there. Okay, so here's the deal, right? Bart Sears is one of my favorite comic artists. Like, mm -hmm. they're... Justice League Europe, Exo Man of War, just to name a few. Yep. Yes, you're exactly right. Um, so I was like, I see his name card on there, and I've never seen him before. And I'm like, you're Bart. And he's like, yep. Mm -hmm. And I said, listen, I have a story to tell you. I said, when I was when I was in college, I had a signed copy of Justice League, no, uh, Justice League Europe number one, uh, signed by you. I said, I had I, I had it in a long box with a bunch of other comics, and wouldn't you know it, I had to sell it, right? I had to sell it. Um, because the whole long box, because I had to make rent, you know, because my girlfriend then became my wife, and we had bills to pay. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not bitter about that either. Adulting. Right? <laughs> right? So, anyway, it's all adulting. So, 
So we're talking about comic artists, you know, the influence, uh, you know, shaped my life. You know, he talked about comic artists that shaped his life, and and as he did it, he pulled pulled a comic from behind him, and it's Justice League Year of Number One. It's just, yes, it is. It's Justice League Year of Number One, and he puts it on the thing, and he signs the poly bag. He says, "There you go. Now, now, now you got it back." I'm like, are you kidding me? That's wonderful, right? So now I am on a mission, right? I go buy a bunch of comics from uh, uh, from various neighbors, of sundry yours. dealers, yes. right? Um, and and I said, I said this is this is the coolest thing ever. I said, what 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 can I pay you to sign these? He goes, um, and his wife is there, and she says, no no no, we don't we don't pay we we don't charge for signatures at shows. I said, I had eight books. I'm like, really? So I brought I, I brought my boss over there and we chatted a while while he signed them. And I said, so where do you live, Bart? He goes, Rome, New York. I live in Utica. Yeah, we're almost neighbors. Super neighbors, right? I said, oh my God. What are, you know, what, what am I doing fanboying here? We can go out and get food. You know, we can go out and get dinner sometime. And, um, you know, so, so he was super nice about that. And I've got, you know, I... You know how they say never meet your heroes? Mm -hmm. Total he's, opposite. He's a gem. Life. Oh my God, he's a he's a champ. He's like Walt Simonson level nice. Oh, right. Walt and Louise are the best. The yeah. Of the earth. Oh God, yeah. So super happy about that. And so now that we're almost done, we get to go back. I got my signed books, and uh, I'm a pretty happy guy. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ken. Super. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm going to go subscribe to your channel, yes. and I'm going to send you a message and let you, you know, let you know. Yes, please that do. I did. Begin to get lost The smell got me caught up Can't tell if I'm asleep or awake I'll do whatever it would take Just to serenade my case Just to show her that I got What it takes to replace From her lips to her thighs Her hips to her eyes She so fine Yeah From her head to her toes Her soul to her mind She so, so, so amazing I've been praying for a woman like this All my life I've been waiting To find the right girl That I could call my wife Pero, pero, este amor me tiene loco I pray my God don't hold it against me Este amor me provoco I hope for a job just to hold it against me yeah. She's got my heart on fire She's become my only desire with every kiss I get higher and higher and higher and higher Yeah, sweet thing Let's go somewhere we can be alone and we can What's up Council of Comics? It's Mark McKenna <laughs> Hey! Awesome artist, illustrator. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thanks, man. So, we'll start with the intro question of the day. How did you get into comic book illustration? Uh, I was a comic book collector as a uh, teenager. And then when I met with the guidance counselor in high school, he said, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? I said, either uh, comic book creating or uh, making, mo making movies. And I went to the School of Visual Arts in uh, 1982. I met with the film, uh, film coordinator, the film chairman. And he said to me, the chances of you getting a job in film are astronomical, like 10,000 to one. And I was like, I'll do comics. Wow. So I switched over and I stayed with comics. I had Will Eisner as one of my teachers. The guy Amazing. Made the spirit. And then I got a job at Marvel Comics in 1985, worked on staff doing art corrections, and that's how the whole thing began. Art corrections, people. Those are the real stories of the 80s and 90s. <laughs> um, so what comic do you have now that you can talk to us about? Uh, well, I did this uh, thing for a friend, a guy that I met at the show last year called Vampire. It's a rock and roll vampire book. And um, uh, Zach, the creator of the character, came over to me a year ago and asked me if I could put together the artwork for it. So that included uh, penciling, inking, lettering, and coloring. So I have a team that put together, and we did the complete book. That's amazing. Yeah. And what's cool about this is, you guys remember Sea Monkeys? Sea Monkeys was a thing back in the 70s and 80s. But um, what we did was, uh, in the back of it, there's a 
promo for Sea Monkeys and X-ray vision glasses, which were a thing. And I had Sea Monkeys as a kid, and Sea Monkeys are nothing but brine shrimp, and they die after about a week. But, uh -huh. but they, it's, fun, it's cool though. None of them play guitars. You know? Amazing. <laughs> Got a shot issue number two. All right, awesome. Well, Mark, thank you. Always a pleasure. Good Always to see good you. To see you too, man. Make up for all the fighting going on. It's so sexy when you're mad. The best I ever had. To lose you would be bad. So don't tease me, love. Just believe me, love. Be fast. Este amor me tiene loco. I pray my God don't hold it against me. Este amor me we're opening Comic Con. This is Wayne. This is Scott. Bone Manchester. How you doing? <laughs> Having a great time here. It's like coming to a family reunion every time we yeah, visit. Every time we're here. <laughs> it does feel But a way. good family reunion. I, 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 I should preface that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You guys know about our channel? Yes. I, 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 I've been friends with this one for. So I, I hope you already liked and subscribed and, and joined our giveaway. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, right I, off, yeah, right? I'm trying to think. <laughs> it would be so important. To do that for us. Yes. Um, yeah. No. I, I, I'm trying to think. But because I don't remember how many. It's years. almost 20 years. Okay. So we've known each other a very long time. So, so of course I know all about I, it. <laughs> no. I, well, I was gonna say. I mean, well, we met 20 years ago when you were teaching, back. Oh wow. Back our way. Okay. Yeah. Right. So like, obviously you're still in education now, but like, yeah. So like, so like, that was like, I saw you a little bit. Then when you moved, I actually saw you more when you moved up here. <laughs> That's true. true. That's true. really funny. Yeah. Then we actually had like more sincere interactions. It wasn't just like, oh, I stopped by with the school kids because we want to do a Hero Clicks club. Yeah. So yeah, it's been great. Yeah, you're right. And I moved up here in 2004. So yeah, over 20 years. Very good. Wow, it's <laughs> funny. Here. I hope for a job who's down against me. Que te paso, dime algo. Que te tienes llorando. Que estás pasando. Te amo tanto. Dime de tu alma. Aquí en mis brazos. Where you should be, nothing compares to thee. Don't compare to me. Nigga D not like others. Hated by the government, loved by mothers. Good That's what's you. over. Good, yeah. How you been? Good, good. Yeah, Enjoying yourself out here? Enjoying myself, having a good show. Did some new prints, made a lot of business, made nice. a lot of new friends. Uh, nice. Network, some uh, good food, getting some beer up at the bar. Nice. Oh, yeah. You know but, you're always a good friend of the council. Yeah, I don't know that. You guys are pushing it with that JR, JR uh, stuff, You don't man. talk bad about JR, yeah, JR. I told you, I, t I was wrong, though. He can't kick everybody's ass. He can't kick your ass, I don't think. I'm looking at you now, I don't think he can kick your ass. <laughs> Undercovers, make you numb, twist, and shudder. Has my tongue and lips discover how to love you the right way. Rubbing you like legs, she love to fight me. Rihanna, she bite me. Her male friends don't like me. But see, more they speak, man, the more they hype me. <laughs> all right, all right. What's up, Council of Comics? We're here with Mike McComb. Please tell me I said that right. You said it perfect. All right, great. And I'm, I'm too polite to say you didn't. So. No, but that's okay, but I like the truth. We're good, we're good. He is an amazing artist. Uh, you might be familiar with his work on Justice League United as I am. Maybe more so his work on X-Men, which has been phenomenal. And it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Well, thank you. Um, so, first question, how did you get into comic book illustration? Oh, when I was 19 years old, I took my portfolio to a convention in London. And uh, Dick Giordano was there, who was the publisher of DC Comics wow. at the time. And I showed him, I showed him my portfolio, and um, he said he would, he would put me in touch with one of his editors, and he did. And that was Andy Helfer, who was looking for filling work on the Justice League books. Nice. So um, Kevin Maguire, who was drawing them, quit that month, I think. And uh, so I just, I started drawing those. And, um, it's been downhill. Oh, oh no! I actually I love this because I had mentioned Justice League International when I first walked over here. But like I really, that's when my first exposure to your work, um, and then um, and then of course some X Men. And then I remember I was really excited with Justice League United because they originally uh, like, were like, oh, Justice League Canada. I'm like, yeah. oh, half Canadian. This is amazing. <laughs> um, so then of course they launched a cover with like every flag, and I got uh -huh. them all. Um, so of your works, is there one that you know? Pr is there one that like stands out to you? One that like really feels like a really important well, I, I art a, child. I did a uh, oh, art child. That's different. That threw me. Ooh. So um, I did a book with Keith Giffen in the nineties called Vexed, mm -hmm. and it only lasted six issues. It, it came out just before the implosion, and it was about the god of misfortune. Oh. And it was just a lot of fun. It was working with Keith, who was a genius, 
and I had I had a really good time drawing it, but it was cancelled before the first issue was published. Oh no! Because of the implosion. And, um, oh, it was an implosion era. Yeah, in the in the nineties, uh, comics just stopped selling for some reason as a reaction to, you know, the kind of inflationary period. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that was that was my favorite comic to work on. The high point drawing wise, I did a book called Fear Itself, mm -hmm. uh, Spider Man with Chris Yost, and that was probably the best thing I drew. Oh, that was in continuity when yeah. I was drawing the interiors of comics. Um, that's where everything just seemed to click. I, you know, I, I actually remember that. That's a that's a yeah, that great a, issue. A lot of rats in that story. <laughs> <laughs> The rat, but, the, the, one of the villains could control rats, and I just remember endlessly drawing rats. And you're just like, why? Why did I say this well, is I okay? Well, I had moved to New York, and um, New York has kind of a rat situation. So, you know, so, you, had, you had a lot to work with around I, you, I visually. I life, basically, yeah. Um, did you, um, no, that's, oh my god, how I just lost it. Great with the art child, great interior work. Do you have anything coming up? Well, I draw, I draw mainly covers now, and licensing stuff for Marvel, so... I just did um, some stamps for the Royal Mail, uh, some X-Men stamps. They just for the out. Royal Mail? For the Royal Mail. Nice. Go um, online they're, they're to they're look there. for those. <laughs> That's beautiful. Um, and they're X-Men. I love X -Men it. X-Men stamps. I, did, um, I think I did about 20 logos for minor league baseball through Marvel. Oh, wow. Um, not Marvel characters. We just kind of Marvelized yeah. their, their... The, 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 the minor league baseball yeah. characters. Players. So that was fun. So I do jobs like that that lots of people see, but not necessarily comic book people right. see. And I do lots of covers for Marvel still. I'm doing uh, the covers for the new Captain Marvel series that Anna Senti is writing. Awesome. Um, and I'm just, I think I'm just about to start working on a, a Miles Morales cover when I get back. Oh, to yeah, who we'll, will be so, very yeah. much looking forward to that. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So I just, I do lots of covers, so it's hard to pin down exactly what I'm doing at any given time. I just, whatever they want me to do, I'll draw. It's my Wonderful. sweet space. <laughs> I hope so. Well, we really appreciate it, and thank you thank so you. much for your time today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, Council of Comics, we finished our day at Albany Comic Con. We're here with John. He threw hey, it. He throws this wonderful event that we always come out here. Anything you want to say to everybody? No, I appreciate the support. Appreciate everybody coming out. Come see us again in October, October 29th. Excellent. And it's albanycomiccon.com? Albany Comic Con. Well, on Facebook, it's Albany Comic Con New York, and it's Albany Comic bookshow.com there you go get to it get over there and be ready for the next show thank you thank you good to see you buddy. all right so shout out to the cancel of comics please blah blah and blah what was it again like and subscribe, like and subscribe. hello i'm mike mccorn this is the council of comics please like and subscribe please like and subscribe to the council of comics i would consider it a personal favor thank you so much Hey, make sure that you're, you're checking out the, the Council of Comics. Click it, sub subscribe to it, like it, love it, be there. <laughs> Shout out to the Council of Comics. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. So, check this out. Council of Comics YouTube. Like and subscribe. Make sure you do it. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you don't ever miss a new video. And give them guys some love like every video they have. Do it. Do it now. All right, All right Council of Comics. We finished Albany Comic Con. Thank you guys for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Woo! Oh, we did 500 subscribers. We did it. We did it. We did it.